So, Nightingale just has so many things that you have to learn early on, and it feels so big and so overwhelming. Here's the things that I just wish I had known earlier. Now, before I begin, Nightingale, the filming of this, is still a new game. As such, I will be trying to stay away from all spoilers that I can. Everything that I'm really showcasing right now is either in the beginner zone or things that you can do in the first hour of the game. Secondly, because this game is new still, these are subject to change. So, let us begin. Now, one of the biggest things about this game is when you walk up and actually start smashing things, you have to then figure out, you know, like, oh, well, which one of those? And it's like, okay, well, here. If you actually just hold E instead of press it, it just vacuums up all of the materials. It is literally just an area auto-collect. And as you can see, it's actually got a pretty good size of vacuum power. Now, this is a big help. I'm actually glad that the devs themselves brought this up even. It is a very easy to miss one. So, going next, this there is an auto run in this game. It is caps lock. I would personally recommend rebinding that, but it kind of puts you in this walk mode. Whereas if you then tap shift, you are now in auto run. So that is good because some of these maps are quite large to get around. Now, we're going to look at Essence real fast. Now, Essence is basically the currency, repair, everything of this game. So opening up my inventory, you can see that I have some crude plant fiber. Now, Essence, getting Essence is simple. You just literally extract. But what you're really going to look for is if you need a bunch of basic essence quickly, the crude fiber is generally the best just because you can get a lot of it. As you can see, wood, which takes far longer to get at six, whereas this is literally one to one. And that leads us to part two of this, which is your challenges. You don't want to miss these. I, I don't think I saw anything bringing these up, and when I found them, I kind of just face palmed. Every so often, in the bottom right of your corner of your screen, you will see a little pop-up that says, you have done mining 101 or something like that. That is what these are. If you look, recruit a survivor, which is what your companions are called. Once you've done it, you just claim this and you get 50 essence. You do this and you get this. These are kind of like little mini challenges. Now, I'm not going to show anything past this so that you don't, you know, have any spoilers for this. But these will give you a monstrous amount of essence of all kinds. I think when I finally found it, I had 3,000 just sitting there that I had no idea. Now, next, when we're in the same thing, you can turn quest on and off by tracking them. So if you don't want all the quest over here, no, I'm not going to click it because I don't want you to see mine. Now, going over to here, this is a... If you are a person who doesn't want spoilers, do not click this page. I'm not going to open any of these up. But this is literally what every vendor in the game sells. If you want a specific thing, like you want a build set, you can find out exactly which vendor has it. If you're wondering what type of vendors in your area there are, that is how you do it. You can find a lot of stuff out by there. Now, going over survival and other things, the number one first thing I say to everyone is do not go into anywhere with combat or can, you know, resourcing without first resting. The game tells you to build these little ones. The thing is, though, you can place a bedroll under anything. Like, I found a cannon one time, and I was able to put one inside because it is sheltered. But immediately build these. Do not go anywhere because that rest bar will eat into your stamina. It will get you killed. Now, going over combat and other things. 
If you look in the bottom left, right next to my health bar, you'll see that I have three separate food buffs that are just ticking out right now. Now, to go over food buffs, yes, you can actually have up to three buffs. There is stipulations, though. It has to be three unique buffs. So you can't eat, for instance, two meat from predators of the same kind. But you can, for instance, have mixed plants made with water spinach and then another one with mushrooms. This will give you a big jump in health and stamina. And depending on what you actually mix and match with them, it'll affect lots of different stats from health regeneration to, you know, stamina regen, whatever. Now, now that you've put up your little camp here, a lot of people will smash these to get back half the resources. Uh, that is not the best way to do it with player-made stuff. I unfortunately found that out after I went through a couple of my own walls. If you actually hit X, you'll see that I now have a little screen at the bottom. I can literally copy these things, move them, or remove them. Now, if I let's say you're building a certain wall type, I can just copy and then replace, then copy the other wall, and then post it. That's a good way to build structures. If you are, oops, I put this bag slightly in the wrong spot. There you go. You don't have to worry about that. Well, let's say that you have done with your camp, or you just don't like where you built your primary base. You can just walk right up, hold V. Returns all the materials to you. Now, this is a great way to move stuff around your base, as well as to just get the resources back. Now, one big thing that people don't think about with the whole, you get 50% back if you smash something, there are a lot of items in this world from points of interest and everything. If you see it has this little name slash health bar, or just a name like that, that means it's an item you can interact with. And you'll walk up to a loot chest like this and go, Oh look, I grabbed everything inside, and then you walk off. You didn't think about the fact that that box is made out of materials that you are going to want. So when you finish collecting everything out of the loot box, smash the chest. If you see a point of interest that has campfires or other stuff with materials that you might need, smash those. They literally will give you back half of the materials in them. And they're generally the more expensive materials that you're going to need. Now, while I've got the basket here as well, if you do hold E, you can actually rename. Now you see underneath the basket name, it has test. There's a third thing about this. If you have companions, there's a button here. If I select this, my companion will drop off anything in his inventory that is like resources into this basket. They'll also pull things out of this basket, such as wood to fill your campfires and stuff. Quick warning for that. As of this time, they do not know how to basically tell the difference between expensive wood and I want to burn it wood. So do not trust them with anything that you don't want going into a fireplace. The devs have already stated they're working on this. Hopefully, it'll be a quick fix. Now, heading into combat and other topics like that. Early on, I recommend the pickaxe. Now, because of the downward arc of the pickaxe, you're very likely to actually get headshots. And it has a lot of weight behind it, so it will stun enemies. At the same time, pick the one that you like and feel comfortable with. But remember that each enemy does have different weaknesses and strengths. But when you're grabbing a new tool or weapon, always check the bottom right. You'll see that I have a left mouse button and right mouse button. Now this obviously is swing and that is defend. But then when I switch to the knife... You can see that I've got three buttons now. I've got the standard slash, then I've got a dash, and then F will actually cause me to use my item. Now, if I switch to the torch, though, 
if you are fighting in the dark, and this is what you think you have to do instead of using your primary weapon, there's actually a trick to that. By hitting F, you can actually throw torches. Now, they won't cause damage, they won't set anything on fire, but they do leave these little burning embers, and these embers will actually stay lit and give you a light source. Making these crude torches cost almost nothing. You can see I've got 29 of them on me. They're very easy to work with. Now, with this bar open, as you can see, I can go over here to my healing little healing bomb that you actually make. You can see I've got some heal potions that I found in a chest. If you notice, the last one is Q. A lot of people don't notice that. You can actually use those even when holding a two-handed weapon. I will actually use that Q effect no matter what it is. So you want to put something there, a healing item or a stamina potion, those sorts of things. Or anything else that you want to use in a quick type style use. Now, switching back to the one-handed weapon. A lot of people think, okay, well, this is my dash. This will get me out of the way of combat. But what you don't think about is, oh, this actually does give you a bit of a boost. So when you jump, I can make a jump that I would not have been able to make. There's no way I'd make that. See, I would have fallen off the edge if that was a fall between two pillars. And as you can see, there's a lot of areas in this game that you might actually have to jump in a way that you are needing that extra three to five feet. When you combine that with the umbrella, you can slow glide. And you do get the umbrella very early. I found it in a chest while I was doing the basic tutorial. See, if you actually walk of the actual jump into it. Now, speaking about momentum, these are not gliders like most games. Do not pop this three feet above ground expecting to just stop. This game requires you to use it a bit before you actually hit the ground. So that's a good thing to learn. Now, you notice, instead of taking damage instantly, I have that falling impact meter. Now, generally, as long as you don't fill up a certain amount of that, you're generally fine. Going back to the umbrella though, this is not just a glider. It is actually an umbrella, and I know that sounds silly at first, but if it is raining outside and you take this thing out, your character does not get wet. If you are in a blizzard and you take this out, you stop taking damage. If you're in the desert and you take out an umbrella, you stop getting heat buildup. As such, <laughs> pretty much any type of environmental effect that I've run into, that is something from the sky down, this has stopped it. Now, going into your companion now. Your companion you will get pretty early on, like at the end of the basic, uh, not even at the end of the tutorial, during the tutorial. So, these people, you will help them do a task, and then they will actually work with you as a companion. Now, you can give them different equipment. Now, as you can see, mine is equipped in the purple Twitch gear. If I speak with them, don't panic because of Dismiss Recruit being right next to the inventory. If you do accidentally click it, they'll wander around for a few moments, then you can just re-recruit them. So, if you do hit it, if you do decide that you like a different survivor more, like Ola here, you know, if I wanted to switch out to a different one that I just like the model because as of right now, they don't have any difference in stats. It is really just you're basing off of what you want your companion to be like. Now, uh, if I dismiss them, they will just after a few moments, poof, 
And there'll be a chest sitting there with all their equipment. Now, as I go into here, as you can see, I can take the sticks out and things like that. I have equipment that I've assigned to them. Now, I have given mine a simple maul. Because if you give them a tool like an axe, they'll actually go chop down logs. If you give them a pickaxe, they'll actually start. Their gear will not actually take any durability damage. The only reason you see the durability loss on these was because I was wearing it originally. Now, I've given mine a maul because it has no resourcing, so they just back me up in combat. Now, these remaining slots, though, are the big main important thing. They do not have a weight capacity as of this time. As such, if I take an entire stack of stone that would weigh 90 plus kilograms for me, or an entire stack of ore, they only go by stack. As such, you can carry a lot of materials with these people being a pack mule. And they just really can help you out. Now, a couple of other interesting features. If you give them the hammer, not the maul, the hammer. The hammer is actually a repair hammer. If you hand them one, they'll actually walk around your base finding stuff that is damaged. So if you ever suspect, like, a random animal has damaged part of your building, you can hand them that, and they'll actually basically seek it out and repair it for you. As such, it gives them a lot of uses. If you go down, they will actually help you back up. If they go down, they do not die. You can actually just walk up and click them. It's almost a little broken how fast you can get them up. I'm pretty sure at a specific point, they'll probably make it so that you have to hold or something. But as of right now, I can do one click. They're back up with about 30% of their health. That's really good if you're wanting to help with combat. Giving them a good proper weapon can really help. Now, the maul is a good one simply for it knocks enemies down. And as such, they're a little bit good at crowd control. Now, that is basically the stuff I had really wished I had known early on in this game. I hope it helps, and I hope y'all have a great time being Realm Walkers.